Welcome everyone. In today's video, we create a speech recognition model with TensorFlow that can recognize keywords. And then we turn this into an actual project that can listen to real time data from your microphone and can then classify this. So you could use this, for example, for a home automation project or whatever you want. In our case, we built a simple uh, demonstration model that can control a game. So let me show you the demo. If I run this, you will see the output that it classifies the keywords. And then I can also move move and control the turtle in Python. So I can say up, down, right, go, left, up, go, stop. And you see this worked pretty well. So this is super awesome. So let's get into it. All right, so the code is largely based on this official TensorFlow guide, simple audio recognition, recognize keywords. So you can read through this by yourself and they also provide a link to the collab. So we click on this and now we are going to use this. So you should be able to follow me here pretty easily. But later, most importantly, you will learn how to turn this into an actual project on our machine. So let me close the table of contents and the first thing to do is check the runtime type. So this should be set to a GPU. And now we can click on run all. You can do the same. And while this is running, let's go over this very briefly. So the code is based on this speech commands data set that is publicly available. And it has these commands down, go, left, no, right, stop, up, and yes. And the first thing they do is the imports, of course, and then they download the data sets and then they check the commands. Then they access the file names. So by the way, if we have a look at the data, then you see this is organized like so. So we have data, mini speech commands, and then for each label, it is in a separate folder. And then inside the folder, there are the different WAV files. Yeah, we can see them here. So yeah, here they extract this, the file names, then they split this into training, validation and testing. Then here they prepare a example so we can have a look at the audio, then they decode the audio. So this step is important later. So here they read this from a WAV file. But later, of course, we want to get this directly from the microphone input. Um, so we have to remember what this decode wave is doing. So here, for example, it says it normalizes the data to be between minus one and one. Um, yeah, then they get the label. Then here, the first thing they do is now they turn this into a waveform from the wave file and create a data set from this. And yeah, here they print the waveform. And then the second step is to convert the waveform to a spectrogram. So um, yeah, here they have this helper function get spectrogram. And then I think yeah, here they display this so we can listen to one sample. No, no, no. Um, then they plot the spectrogram. So here we can see this is the waveform and this is the spectrogram. So basically we have an image now and can use a convolutional neural net to classify this. So this is what we do in a moment. And yeah, then they plot some things again. And now they build the model. So here we have this preprocessed data set function. And as we see, so it convert it creates a TensorFlow data set. And now the first thing they do is get the waveform and then get the spectrogram. So it applies these two steps for preprocessing. Then here we get this for the training, validation, and testing. And then here they built the model. So um, they built a sequential model with an input layer. Then they downsample this. Then they have a normalization layer. And then, like I said, we have an image now. So we can apply convolutions. So conf2d layers and then mixed with max pooling. And in the end, we flatten this and apply linear layers. So dense layer for the classification. So here we have layers dense with num labels at the very end. Then here we get the summary. Then we say model compile and model fit. And now this is training. So it's already done by now. Then we can plot the history and then it we evaluate this. So it gets 85% on the test set. 
Then they also plot the uh, confusion matrix and now they run inference on an audio file. So this is also important for us. So in the end, yeah, it looks like this and you see for one sample, it looks like this. So now let's build on top of this. So until now we have used the original cola, but now we have to add a few things. So first we want to save and then download the model from the cola to our machine. And then we also have to change the pipeline slightly because now we no longer load the files from a WAV file, but we want to directly use our microphone input. So first let's show how to load and download the model. And for this I also here want to pr uh, print the label prediction to verify that the loaded model has the same prediction. So we say label predict equals numpy argmax of the prediction along axis equals one. And if we print then we have to access commands and then label and now we say label underscore predict and if we run the cell again then you see the prediction is no and now let's save the model so for this we add a new cell and this is super simple with tensorflow and the keras api we only say model save and then we give it a name saved underscore model and now if we execute this cell, then we should see if we click the files, then here this created a whole folder. So this is what we have to download, but we can't download it like this. But and that's why we have to convert this to a zip file now. So we add another cell here, click on code. And now we can run a command like so an exclamation mark. And then we say zip dash r and now we give it the name we say saved underscore model dot zip and we zip the dot slash saved underscore model folder and now if we run this then this should add a zip file so if we click on refresh then here we have the zip folder and now we can click on this and download this to our machine so this is how we can extract data from the colab so now you should see the saved model zip folder in your downloads folder and next i want to add another cell here and now i want to verify that the loaded model works so we can say loaded model equals models dot load underscore model and then the name was saved model and this should now be the loaded model and now we copy this part so I think we only need this and then add another cell and click on code and now here we use the low that model and now if we run this, then this should be the very same result. So no, and also the same plot. So saving and loading works. And now comes the tricky part. So now we no longer want to use the build in TensorFlow method to load the WAV files, but now we want to directly work with a NumPy array that we get from the microphone input. So inside the collab, we cannot use the microphone. So in here, I want to simulate this and um, get the numpy array differently. So I add another cell and then we use the built in wave module to load the frames. So we can open the file and then we say we get the number of frames and then we read the frames and then we can turn this into a numpy array by using numpy from buffer and then the wave. And if we print, for example, the shape, then we see we have 16,000 um, samples in here. And now the next step is to verify the pipeline with this step instead of using the um, built-in decode method. So let's add another cell here. And here we want to get the waveform. And for this, let's have a look at the pre-process data set method again. So here they do two steps. So they get the waveform and the label and then they get the spectrogram and label ID. We don't care about the label here because we only do inference. But now let's have a look at what 
get waveform and label is doing. So here they decode the audio and here they use the built-in TensorFlow audio decode wave method. And if we hover over this, then this is very important. Here there is the documentation. So it has this range signed 16 bit values will be scaled to minus one and one. So we have to remember the maximum value here, 32,768. And we have to normalize it in the same way. Otherwise the results will be very much off. Um, so let's go down again to our cell and we can do this very easily. So we only have to say signal underscore array divided by this value. And now we want to convert this into a tensor. So we can do this by using tensorflow um, convert to tensor and then the waveform and we also give it a data type of let's use tensorflow float 32 and now we should have this as a tensor and in the correct uh, format so you see the values should be between minus one and one then the second step was to get the spectrogram so we can say spec equals and this is the built-in get um, spec Program. There it is. And it gets the waveform. And now we have to be careful. So we have to expand the dimensions and add one dimension for the batch dimension. So we can do this by saying TensorFlow expand underscore dims of the spec. And then we give it the dimension zero. And now this is in the correct shape. And now we can get the prediction by um, simply calling the loaded model again. And this gets the spec. And then if we could, if we, we can print this, so we say print prediction, and this should be the very same values that we've seen before if we print this. So here we don't print the prediction, but if you do this, then this should be the same values. Um, so yeah, you can check this again. And now we also, um, let's copy this. Um, so we want to get the label prediction and then we print this and then we plot this. And um, yeah, now let's run this cell. And you see the plot looks the same, we get no. So now this is working the same way with a built-in NumPy array. So you see these steps here are essential. And now we basically need to apply this code in our code on our machine. And then we also need to copy this helper function, get spectrogram from this call-up. So yeah, let's do this. So I already prepared the project and what you have to do is copy the saved model zip file into this directory and extract it here. Then I also recommend to create a virtual environment and we have to install TensorFlow and PyAudio. If you're not familiar with PyAudio, then we have another tutorial that talks about this in more detail here on our channel. And then I created some helper files. So let's go over them very briefly. I also put them on GitHub and the link will be in the description. So I created one helper file preprocess audio buffer and this is doing exactly what we just did in the last step. So we normalized the audio buffer and then convert it to a tensor call get spectrogram and return this. And then we have to copy the get spectrogram um, method from the collab. So this is the exact same code. And then just in case I also set the seed value. Then we have a recording helper that uses Pi Audio. So here I create one function record audio. So what's so I talked about this in several other tutorials um, already. So I'm not going into more detail here. But what's important here is that we record for one second. And if we um, do the math and then we use these frames per buffer and this rate then this will end up in 16,000 samples. So exactly like our training samples. And then in the end, we again use NumPy from buffer and then join the frames here. So now we have this as NumPy array. And then I also have a helper function to terminate uh, Pi Audio again. And now let's go over to main and here we import everything. So we import NumPy as NP. We also need from tensorflow.keras, we want to import models. And then we say from recording helper, we want to import 
record audio and the terminate function and from TensorFlow Helper we want to import preprocess audio buffer. Then we get the commands by saying commands equals and now we get this from the collab. So this is important, make sure that this is in the correct order. So let's copy and paste this and um, don't forget to put the commas in here. So if you, you run this yourself, then due to the random element, there might be uh, a different order. So yeah, make sure to use the same order that you have in your collab. And now let's load the model. So we say loaded model equals models dot um, load underscore model and the name is saved model. Then let's create a helper function predict mic and here we call everything. So we say audio equals record audio then the spec equals preprocess audio buffer with the audio, then we call the model and get the prediction by calling loaded model with the spec. And then we um, call, we get the label, the label prediction equals numpy dot argmax of the prediction along axis equals one. Then let's get the command by saying command equals commands of the label pred zero. Then let's print the predicted label and this is the command. So here we need a comma. And then we also want to return this command from this function return command. And then we say if underscore name equals equals underscore um, main. Then we want to run this as a while true loop. So here we say while true and then we want to say command equals um, predict mic and now we say if command equals equals stop then we want to call the terminate function to close pi audio and then we break. So now hopefully this will work. So now we can say python main.py make sure to activate your virtual environment. Up, up, down, up, right, left, go, left, go, right, down, stop. All right, so this worked. And now the last thing to do is to add a turtle. So for this, again, I have a helper function, turtle helper that inits the turtle and sets some settings. Then I have helper functions to go right, up, left or down, depending on the current direction we are facing. So here we simply turn the, um, here we turn the turtle. And then we have a move turtle function that puts everything together. So here we call go up, down, left or right. And if we say go, then we move the turtle forward. And if we stop, then we simply stop. And then in the main, we actually break. So here we can import this. So we say from turtle helper, we want to import move turtle. And then here we only call move turtle with the command. This is all that we need in order to run our turtle now. And now let's again call python main.py. Up, left, right, down, go, right, go, up, go, stop, all right, this worked perfectly. All right, I hope you enjoyed this project. If you did so, then please drop us a like and consider subscribing to our channel. Again, the resources will be in the description below and then I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.